recognize Mr. Jordan for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, doctor, um, should the United States be in the World Health Organization? The United States should not uh, should both be part of the World Health Organization, but working with all the member states to create the necessary reforms that are required. Did you support leaving the World Health Organization when in, during the Trump administration? No. Uh, okay, I'm looking at Dr. Girard's transcript uh, from his deposition. He said, "I can tell you from the task force, it surprised me." But Dr. Birx was one of the leading advocates for pulling out of the WHO. So was was he stating something that was not not true there? There was a difference between withholding funding versus pulling out of the WHO. Oh well, let's ask it that way. Are you, are, should we should we be giving them what, what five hundred million dollars a year? I think is what we do. Should we be giving them American tax dollars to this organization that lied to us? I was supportive of withholding funding based on development of the appropriate reforms and to fi figure out precisely what happened during January. Because a week at the beginning Well, we're of back in it. Have they done the reforms that you were supportive of, of having them do before we gave them the American people's hard-earned tax money? I was supportive of the reforms. So you're, you're comfortable now with the Biden decision to get back in the World Health Organization and pay the money? Or not? I am no longer in government. No, I'm just asking. <laughs> I believe that we should have um, a clear accountability and milestone associated with the funding that we give to the WHO out of our you if that's assessments. The case, I'm asking you if that's the case now. I believe that we should do our assessment. It is the dollars above and beyond the assessment, which I think is about 80% of the dollars, that we should hold directly to required reforms. Okay, well, we'll, we'll take that. Disagree with 80% of the money that's going there that, from, from the United States. How about gain-of-function research? Should that be allowed? I don't know all the details of gain-of-function research. Um, I think the decision has been made with certain countries. We do not do gain-of-function research. So definitely limit with certain countries. Uh, should the American tax dollars be used to fund gain-of-function research? Well, that's a very big blanket statement, and it's difficult. I mean, there are Well, there's been legislation introduced in the United States Congress to, to say that it shouldn't happen. Uh, some people even, even we've got some doctors who are members of the United States Congress who, who are saying that we should not fund it at all. It's just way too darn dangerous. And particularly in light of what we've seen with this pandemic for the last two years, I, 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 I tend to share those, those views. I'm just asking, do you think we should not have American tax dollars funding gain-of-function research? The trouble is they, there are class four agents that we work with that are very deadly, that we've worked for years to try to improve countermeasures. That is not solely done within the United States, and obviously that would be part of gain of function because you are making changes to the virus to work on countermeasures to control those viruses. And so I would hate for our ability to utilize the great minds of science in allied countries. How about the more basic question? Should we be sending American tax, American tax dollars to labs in China to do any kind of research? There are critical investigations that we have supported um, in partnership with China from HIV. Um, and to really work on controlling the pandemic in Asia through our work with epidemiologists uh, and the CDC in China. So you support I think it was sending American tax money to China to do potentially gain-of-function research or other research? Not gain-of-function research. Not gain-of-function research. So we should definitely not do that. That's one place you'll draw the line. No tax Correct. dollars going to China to do gain-of-function research. Correct. Yeah. But I, I think that's what happened in this situation. I think that's what happened at this lab in Wuhan. It was actually gain-of-function research. I believe it came from the lab. Uh, the idea that it was, you know, a bat to a pangolin to a hippopotamus to people, whatever, whatever they say. I just, I just don't buy that. But, but I mean, who knows? Um, uh, the last thing I would say is this: in, in your testimony, in your testimony, you said, uh, uh, being critical of the. Biden administration, you said they shouldn't base decisions about pandemic response on polling. I mean, one of the, one of the things we hear from the other side is, is oh, the, the Republicans are interested in the, in the politics. Well, actually, it's, it's just the opposite. It's a typical thing. Democrats always accuse us of what they're doing. They're basing it on polling. The people who trust the science are the ones who trust the science. Joe Biden's the one who said, if you have these vaccinations, you're not going to get COVID. That was just a flat-out lie. And according to your testimony, 
The government already knew that wasn't the case, but he made the statement anyway. So we're, we're, we support the science, not the polling, not the lies, not trust the government as the Democrats always want to do. We actually want to trust the science and the facts and the data uh, versus uh, trusting the government. Um, with that, Mr. Chairman, I'm over time. Thank you. I yield back. Just get, um, Mr. Chairman, just to clarify what I said was we didn't know at that time um, whether the vaccines would provide that protection or not. Well, actually, I think what you said is I asked you the question when, when the government told us that if, if the, that the vaccinated could not get the virus, I asked you if that was a guess or a lie, and you said, I don't know. That's what you told us. I don't and then know. Joe Biden told us last summer, and you said that was at the start of, of, of uh, calendar year 21, and this is July of 21, so this is seven months later, where the President of the United States says, if you have the vaccinations, you're not going to get COVID. Totally false statement. Um, that's, that's what you said the first round of your testimony. Just to be very clear, there is a period of time that we believe after immunization and after boosting that people do have protection from infection. That does wane, though, and wanes rapidly. Have people who've got the vaccine got COVID? Dr. Yes. Burks, yes, yes, yes. Right. I think all of us remember that debate very well, and I think we all were following the scientists when they continued their research and came to the conclusion that we could. The chair now recognizes.